Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're going to take a look at this thing right here, which is going to start a new era of STH reviews. Specifically, this is the Chewy RZ Box. And the name Chewy is just kind of interesting to me because it always makes me think of a couple things like first is it like a dog toy, second is it like a chewy piece of meat, or three, like is it like a something that's like a, you know, mid 2000s rap where like somebody in the background is going like Chewy. I don't know, it just kind of feels like maybe that's it. This thing has an AMD Ryzen 9 CPU, so it's an eight core CPU with Vega graphics built in. And it also has a bunch of other features that make it actually a pretty nice little PC. So in this review, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at this system and then we're gonna talk a little bit about the performance. We're gonna talk about power consumption. And then I wanna give my thoughts in terms of what I think of this because what we found was something that was, oh, it was just an absolute killer when we actually got to the end of the review cycle for this. Um, and we're gonna get to that story and our key lessons learned a little bit later. Now I did mention that this is a new era and because well, we have this whole Project Tiny Mini Micro thing going, which we've been doing for years, which we've actually been reviewing a lot of the one liter PCs from companies like Lenovo, HP, and Dell. Now, during that series, we've had requests to go review some other PCs that aren't necessarily from those three vendors. And although we've done dozens of those, people are definitely asking for it, and I can totally see why. We've been having a lot of issues in terms of supply chain, just getting those units. And so the idea was, well, why don't we go and look at some of the other units that folks have asked in YouTube comments on the ST main site and comments and so we said okay sure so we're going to start STH mini PC and that whole project because I really want to go and delineate the difference between those kind of like commercial systems and then these kind of more consumer focused systems some of them are not necessarily all consumer focused but you get the idea And so let's get to the hardware. And specifically, the first thing is let's talk about this chassis because to me, this is one of the most crazy things that I've ever seen. So looking at this chassis, the first thing you're gonna say is, well, how big is it? Now, size-wise, it's roughly the same footprint as a Project Tiny Mini Micro node. So you can see that they're basically, here, I'll put them together, and you're gonna see that they're pretty darn close in terms of being about that seven, and I think they're like seven or 7.7 7, uh, inches on either side. Um, so they're basically about the same size, but this is just kind of eyeballing it and just kind of next to each other. These things are about, it's about twice as big as a Project Tiny Mini Micro node. So you could basically put two of the smaller nodes in the same footprint that you have one of these Chewy boxes, but the advantage is that you get more cooling. So that's also a good thing. The other thing though is like, let's just look at the outside of this case. What you're gonna notice on the outside of this case is that it looks like it is almost like one of these industrial fanless PCs that we review. I mean, it has these, this kind of like aluminum chassis and then it has all these, these kind of heat channels and like these channels to give you more surface area on that aluminum chassis. So it looks like this thing's a giant heat sink, but well, it's really not. And it's also not all aluminum, even though some of the marketing materials and folks have said that, it's actually not because the sides, if you can hear that, but the sides and the face plates of this thing like here, that is definitely plastic. So I can tell you 100% that this is a part aluminum, part plastic chassis. So it's not necessarily all metal, even though it kind of looks like it from a lot of photos. Now on the bottom of the unit, we get these rubber feet and we'll actually end up later on taking off these screws to get inside. But on the top of the unit, what we actually get is you can see that this is not a sealed or anywhere even close to a sealed unit. You might even be able to see this on the camera right now, but hopefully at that angle will help. But there are actually giant holes in these slats right here that you can actually just like, you could literally take your drink and just pour it right in there because there's so many holes on this. Even though if you look at it from like this view, it doesn't look like there's any holes and this is like an industrial embedded, you know, ruggedized chassis. It's, it's not even close. It's just no. But getting to the port side, let's start talking about, you know, what makes this system kind of interesting. On the front, we get two USB ports, we get USB type C as well as type A port, and then we get two audio jacks as well. And that's pretty, I guess, pretty standard actually, even in the one liter PCs from the large vendors, you'd see some kind of something like this. The one thing that you don't necessarily see a lot of times is the just giant Ryzen, uh, logo and also the Radeon logo. I mean, this is like like real AMD branding here. I mean, I like the gusto, so 
Cool. On the back of the system, we get a couple interesting features as well. And let's start with, I guess, the display outputs. So we get a display port, an HDMI port, and a VGA port. So we get all three, which is just something different. Sometimes I think a lot of people would rather have like maybe two HDMI or two uh, display ports or something like that instead of VGA. But at least you have all three, which is actually something kind of unique in a chassis like this. And let's talk about USB ports. You get two USB two ports and then two USB three ports, but they're not labeled. So that's just kind of like one of these little tiny things that is like a quality indicator, I think on systems, right? Like if they have simple things, like are the ports labeled in terms of what they are? The other thing above those though, is that we actually get two network ports and these are RJ45 network ports. A lot of these systems that we are gonna be reviewing actually have two and a half gig ethernet, but these were still the one gigabit ethernet generation. And they're also Realtek network adapters, which I'm kind of bummed that they're not Intel adapters, but I guess you can save a few cents on on the bomb cost or a few dollars on the bomb cost, so I totally get it. The one other thing that you do get though is that you do get a power input. We're gonna talk about power consumption later, but the kind of cool thing is I think it's like a 19 volt input, you can double check specs, but I think it's a 19 volt input, which actually makes it kind of easy to go and find a just kind of normal adapter for. I mean, this is the 90 watt adapter that it comes with and it's just kind of a normal AC adapter. One thing that I do just wanna point out that I did not like about this system is you're gonna see right here, you might be able to see it, I don't know, maybe put it a little closer, who knows, but the thing that I noticed is that you're gonna see that around this faceplate on the rear of the system, you actually have these kind of like four little um, kind of like screws. And if you actually go and you try opening them, two things are interesting. One, they're actually not the same Phillips head screw that you would get uh, over here uh, on the bottom of the system to actually get into the system. The other thing is that if you undo them, you can't actually get directly into the system. I think you actually have to first undo this bottom one. And then the third thing is that it was actually kind of hard to even undo it anyway. So I was like, what the heck is the whole point? And yet there's a little warranty sticker here, which again, just makes it totally like, I, have, I just don't understand. I don't understand why you'd have a warranty sticker there when you can you know, get to the memory and the SSDs and stuff on the other side. So like, I just, I don't understand. It's kind of weird, but it's just kind of one of these kind of fun things on this system. Now getting inside the system requires a total of eight of these Phillips head screws that are on the bottom of the system. And then you basically undo those and then you can get in. So when we talk about serviceability, like you compare this to a Project Tiny Mini Micro node where you have one screw, it's often a thumb screw, it gets retained in the chassis. This is like definitely a, I don't know, it's just not as good. It's fine though, it's definitely pretty secure. I mean, this top is not gonna move anywhere. But on the other hand, it also definitely does feel like it's a step down from the big commercial systems from the large vendors. And what that practically means is I'm not gonna go do it in front of you. We're gonna look into that in B-roll. Now, when you're in there, what you can basically see is that we get two SODIM slots, as well as we also get two SSD slots. The system came with two eight gig SODIM, so we got a total of 16 gigabytes of memory. And then on the SSD side, we got a 512 gigabyte SSD. There's another SSD or M.2 slot that's not populated, or at least it is populated, like the slot's actually there, but doesn't actually have a drive in it. So if you do wanna add another drive, you could potentially do that. And since we are in a transitionary period, we're just gonna say this is a PCIe Gen 3 SSD, not a Gen 4 SSD or anything like that, just so everybody knows what's in the system. And we're gonna see the actual speed in a little bit. There is one other piece of hardware that I wanna to talk to before we get to our performance section, and that is really the Wi-Fi, because that is always a big, you know, definitely a big feature in anything like this. And that Wi-Fi is, you know, we saw the spec and actually said that we were gonna get Wi-Fi 6. And when we actually looked at the system and looked in the system, it turned out that we actually had an Intel AX210, which is a Wi-Fi 6E solution. So it's actually a little bit better. It's a newer generation of a Wi-Fi solution. So super cool. And also just because I think a lot of folks just haven't seen, you know, what else you get with this. Uh, BIOS are pretty, pretty rough, but they're definitely totally serviceable and you can definitely get to whatever you need to in there. And then when you do get into Windows 10, this actually came with Windows 10. And home on it, not Windows 10 Pro. Personally, I strongly prefer having Windows 10 Pro out of the box just because it makes things like having a remote desktop session in one of these little boxes super easy if you want to run Hyper-V as a virtualization solution. A lot of people are doing that so they can get like Ubuntu or something like that as a kind of secondary VM. You can totally go do that with, you know, Windows 10 Pro. Just, just Frankly, I think if you are watching STH, most of the folks that watch, watch STH are gonna want the Pro version, not the Windows uh, 10 Home version. So I'm just gonna leave that there. You can, of course, upgrade this to Windows 11, and that is possible, but our unit actually came with Windows 10 out of the box. Okay, so let's talk about performance real quick, and then we're gonna get to power consumption. So on the performance side, 
Overall, the Ryzen 9 4900H is a pretty nice CPU because this is actually a 45 watt TDP CPU. Now you can actually go in the BIOS by the way, and we did see a setting for actually going up to 54 watts, but you can also bring that down. So if you don't want to necessarily use as much power, you can totally go do that as well. Overall performance was very competitive with the other eight core solutions that we're looking at. However, I will say that we do have a couple of units based on the Ryzen 9 5900HX, which is definitely a step above this and a pretty massive step above this, frankly. So I think that this is a good solution, but it's not necessarily the fastest. And so that's kind of what we saw when we did our performance test. On the SSD, I do want to just point out, because I think nobody's ever seen that kind of SSD before, you know, the overall performance is good, but it's definitely not like a top tier, you know, PCIe Gen 3 uh, SSD. It's, it's definitely like a step below that in terms of an NVMe SSD. So why that's important is I think that, you know, especially with these systems, they come with these SSDs and, you know, you see like, oh, I'm going to, I can upgrade and I can get for like $60 more, I can get a terabyte or something like that. And when you actually kind of look at it, you know, one of the things that you'd want to know is like, well, do I want the SSD that comes with this? Or would I rather pay $90 and get a better SSD or an SSD that at least know what it is and put that in and just do a swap and replace this thing? And so when it comes to that, what I would say is that um, in general, I would prefer getting a smaller SSD and upgrading myself to something that I know is going to be a little bit you know, I'm going to at least understand the reliability and warranty on. And then also, I think that if, um, you know, there's there's a lot better just PCIe Gen 3 SSDs out there than this, right? So that is what it is. Will, by the way, Will on our main site actually does all our SSD reviews. And he's done a ton of M.2 SSD reviews, all PCIe Gen 3 and Gen 4 SSDs. And so you can definitely go check those out if you're just kind of looking at like, hey, what do we want to go get? Now let's talk about power consumption real quick. The maximum that we got this unit up to was about 80 watts. So it's pretty close to the 90 watt power brick. So overall I would say the power brick's probably okay, but it's also not giving you a ton of headroom. On the idle side, we actually saw some pretty nice, um, you know, idle numbers depending on the OS and stuff like that. Usually we were about six watts, seven watts, um, but in other cases we, you know, we had a little bit more performance profiles in there. We were idling a little bit more towards the 12 to 15 watts. So you can go and adjust the BIOS settings and get some pretty, um, pretty different, I would say, uh, numbers out of that. So, you know, if you are living in an area where you have like crazy high power costs, you can totally go do that in this, although you might want to go look at a different system as well. Also, I just will note the fact that when we, you know, blasted this thing up to 80 watts, um, we were just kind of really stressing the CPU. We weren't really doing much on the NVMe SSD or the GPU side, and we were still at the 45 watt TDP power limit. So I think that there is a little bit of room to actually go up from where we were. Um, and the system was definitely audible. It wasn't like crazy, crazy loud, but on the other hand, it was definitely audible. So it's, this is not a silent system. It may look like it's a passively cooled system, but there's definitely a fan in there that is spinning and making noise. Okay, so let's get to our key lessons learned on this because I think those are just kind of fascinating to me. One of the key lessons learned, and probably the big one to me, is just what the timeline of this was. So this thing was actually released last fall, uh, in or the fall of 2021, and it was released, and I think the um, it was like something like a $500 for this configuration was kind of like the original, kind of like if you're a project backer, you can get that. And then it went into like sales and distribution and it got up to like, I think like about $650 was pretty normal. And then I think some of the other, you know, kind of just inflation and all kinds of stuff hit. And so this thing was kind of, kind of closer to like a $750 box. So the price definitely went up. But then what was really funny is that when we were finishing doing the, you know, review cycle and deciding, hey, we're gonna split this off from Tiny Mini Micro and all that kind of stuff. One of the really interesting things, at least to me, is the fact that, well, you know, you kind of notice that you can't buy them anymore. They're not on Amazon anymore. They were on Amazon. You can't get them on the Chewy store. You just can't get these things anymore. So like this thing had a product life cycle that was, I don't know, six months, less than that. I mean, what the heck, right? So that means, and this is actually really important. I think if you're thinking about buying these things for not just like a home use, but if you're thinking about buying them for um, something like a small business or something like that, I mean, imagine if you went and you went into a small business and you said, okay, hey, we're gonna sell you your PCs, cool. You sell this thing, you maybe put a little different logo on it, you mark it up, whatever. You sell this the system and then now seven months later, the, the company comes back and is like, hey, we need a couple more of those. And you're like, uh, um, yeah, I mean, we, we can't even, we, we can't get these things anymore. Uh, 
wow. And from a review standpoint, like I can't even tell you to go buy these things at $750 because, uh, or even 650, 500, I can't tell you to go buy them anymore because it seems like they're just not available anymore, which is just like a total bummer. Now, maybe they are gonna come with new stock at some point, but at the same time, we're about to have the Ryzen 6000 series and the Ryzen 5000 series is like way better. So um, I, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend this. I might have recommended it maybe at the $500, probably actually I would have recommended it at the $500 level last fall, but now I kind of would say maybe this isn't the one to go get if you can find them, but you kind of can't. Hey guys, it's Future Me. Just as a quick note, this was not available when we were recording and editing this video, but then we were kind of doing the final read through before uh, uploading it. And apparently it's back on Amazon now for $799. So the price has increased again at $799. Um, frankly, I, I don't know if I can recommend this one just kind of at that price, because I just think that's that's a lot of money for this, this box, especially when you compare it to the Project Tiny Mini Micro nodes, you're getting pretty darn close to a DGPU and a, uh, and a higher end processor in a new system with a warranty and all that kind of stuff. So I just kind of think that maybe at $799, it's a little too expensive but uh, I did this record of this entire thing, which I think is still valid because, well, frankly, these kind of big supply chain interruptions are not great. But at the same time, I do want to note that we did see that it eventually came back on Amazon. But when this actually goes live, who knows at that point? Future me out. And so that does bring me to just kind of one area that these are different than the Project Tiny Mini Micro Nodes. Like Project Tiny Mini Micro Node, we have on-site warranties from large vendors and they'll come and go and replace stuff where we don't really get that with this. We don't even, can't even buy another one to go replace something with. So there's definitely a difference, which is fine, right? I do think the fact that we get, you know, some nice features like in terms of CPU and also the dual NICs and stuff like that, I think is all great. But at the same time, to me, that's kind of a bummer. So I just think that there's a little bit of a difference between this unit and some of the higher end units, which is totally fine. And there are a lot of people that are more than willing to go and say, hey, I want these features and I don't necessarily need that kind of support. For a business setting, I probably would tell you to go get something that is better supported than this. And frankly, this kind of experience where something isn't available after like six months basically makes me say, I, I, I don't know if I could recommend one of these things in the future unless they made some kind of promises that like, yeah, we can go make these things in the future and make them available to folks. Now there are supply chain issues and everybody's dealing with them. So maybe that's the reason, maybe these are gonna come back on market soon, but at the same time, you know, just with this experience, I have not been impressed with that. So that is what I think about this Chewy unit, but we have a couple of other really fun units coming. So I'm very excited. But this first one, that is kind of what it is. And hey guys, I hope you like this look at this little Chewy RZ box. It's a tiny PC, it's reasonably good and there's some nice features definitely to it and it performs reasonably well actually. But we are gonna be having a full mini PC series. And so if you did like this, well, why don't you give the video a like, click subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos, especially on these little mini PCs. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.